Microsoft has been absolutely amazing in recent years in terms of developer engagement with things like TypeScript, VS Code, then they brought GitHub into the fold, and now with the cohesion of all of these things in the form of GitHub Code Spaces. So in this tutorial, we will look at what the Code Spaces experience looks like as a JavaScript developer, so you can determine what you can use it for. So let's go. We have a very simple full stack express react application over here with the backend API that returns a very simple payload and a react frontend that has a simple button that you can click to load this payload and display it on screen. Now, as far as your choice of backend or frontend frameworks is concerned, code spaces really doesn't care. All that really potentially cares about is that you have some package.json file. Now, based on our npm scripts, we can actually run this application in development mode by executing npm start. This starts serving the application during development at localhost 3000. You can see our very simple button component, as well as on slash API, we can see the API is working as well, which means we can click the button, it will make the API call, and we can see the result on screen. All of this from a simple npm start, and if you are curious, I am using this thing called Resil, and I have a lesson dedicated to that that I will leave in the video description, but let's push this code onto GitHub and see how we can work on it in the cloud. Here we have the same code pushed to GitHub and you might not know this, but you can press dot on any GitHub repository to open up VS Code in the browser for that repository. This feature is called github.dev because on GitHub, you press the dot key to start this form of development. And the URL is of course github.dev as well. Now this by itself is very awesome when you want to work on multiple files. However, there is one key limitation. All of this is running in your browser, which means that when you want to run something like a terminal, you can't do that because you don't actually have an operating system to support that terminal. And that's one of the key value propositions of using GitHub code spaces. You can sort of think of it as an extension on top of github.dev. Fundamentally, it's a full VM that can run your Node.js backend code or anything else that you might want to run in something like Docker. Now it is in private beta, so I want to take this time to thank you because of your likes and your follows, I get to play with this cool tech. But let's take a look at what the experience is probably going to look like when it goes publicly available. Once it's enabled for an account, there are lots of ways to access it. For example, you can do it even from github.dev using the view called Remote Explorer as shown, or most likely you will probably go to your GitHub project, click on the code button, and this is where you would most likely only see the local clone options. But now with code spaces enabled, you get this new tab. Now you can pretty much click this create code space on main button and you'd be good to go, but you can customize a few options if you want to by using this drop down and selecting configure and create code space. Now you can customize a few options, for example, which branch do you want the code space to check out, which region the server will be hosted for this particular VM and you want this to be as close to where you are. Southeast Asia is the closest one to Australia. And then what size of VM do you want? My beta only has this particular option enabled. Once you click create code space, it starts to create the code space and notice that there is an option to open this code space in VS Code Desktop. This is because code spaces are more than just a way for you to code within the browser. They can also be a complete VM so you don't have to set up a complete development environment on your machine. All that you need is VS Code and then you can connect to the code space. Now once your code space has been set up and built, you are thrown into the code space UI within your browser and you can see that it looks pretty similar to github.dev. Two key visual indicators that indicate that this is different is that the URL is different. It says code spaces in the name. And then in the status bar, you can see that it says code spaces over here as well. And then the key usability difference over here is that when we open up the terminal, we can actually use it. So if you wanted to start playing around with this code, we could simply run npm start. Note that node underscore modules is already there. This is because when Codespaces was setting up this container, it automatically identified that there was a package.json and ran npm i for us. Now, while I was showing you that, you can see that npm start has completed in the background and our application is running in dev mode and Codespaces has automatically picked up the fact that this particular application is listening on a few ports and expose them for us so that we can preview them with our browser. And in fact, we get this new ports tab that lists all of the ports that this application is listening on. Now, while we were running this application locally, we opened up localhost 3000. So let's view that over here as well by looking at the preview URL that has been generated for us. And of course, you can see that our application is working and we can see that the API is present as well if we hit slash API. And when we go back to the UI, click the load data button, that API call is made and that data is loaded. Now let's see if we can make an application modification and do our entire development all within the browser. 
we go back to our API file and then modify the message that is returned to be something like hello fam and then save the file. That thing that's running in the background with npm start that is building our application is going to pick up all that change within the code space. And if you visit the application again within the browser and click load data, you can see that we get the new response. This kind of application development is not something that we could have done without the code spaces VM. Now that we're happy with the code, we can actually commit the changes directly from here as well, because after all, this is essentially a complete VS code and we can stage these changes, give a nice commit message and then sync these changes to push them over to GitHub. And of course, as you would expect, our changes have made it over to GitHub. That's pretty much all there is to using a code space, but let's look a bit at how you can manage them as well. So we'll close the code space tab as well as the demo application that is running in the cloud. And then from the code tab, when we go into the code spaces section, you can see that because we have a code space running, we get this option to manage all. This takes us into the management UI and then we can click these ellipses to manage this particular code space. For example, we can stop the code space if we plan to come back to it at a future point in time. This basically shuts down that VM. And if you never plan on coming back to this code space, you can actually delete it as well to completely free up anything related to this particular code space. Be sure not to do that if you have not committed all of the code to GitHub. I'll wrap things up there. If you're interested in learning more about web development, here is a lesson where we look at the newly revamped Cypress release. Thank you for joining me. Smash the like and subscribe for more content like this. And I will see you in the next one.